In the next two lessons, we're going to look at various models for the atom, finishing off with the Rutherford model for the atom and the Geiger and Marsden experiment. But before we do that, in this lesson, we're going to look at what is known as the plum pudding model. And before that, we're going to say that the idea of the atom has in fact been around since the times of the Greeks. So it was Democritus who first proposed the idea that all the matter or substances around us was made of indivisible particles called atoms. Okay, so Democritus first proposed the idea of the atom, and the atom comes from a Greek word which means undividable. So according to Democritus, everything around us was made up of these undividable particles, whether they be solids, liquids, or gases. And this idea was pretty much held right the way through to the times of Dalton. Dalton held by this idea, although he realised that each of the elements had their own particular atom. So each element was made of its own undividable atom. That's to say oxygen had its own atom, sodium had its own atom, nitrogen had its own atom, etc. OK, so this idea that everything around us is made of this undividable particle held pretty much to the end of the 19th century when J.J. Thomson discovered the electron. But what is more, he discovered that electrons could be removed from atoms to form ions. And that meant one simple thing, that the atom was no longer undividable. That's to say, the atom itself was made up of smaller particles, one of which was the electron. So the atom was no longer the building block of matter, but there were smaller particles from which matter was constructed. OK, so J.J. Thomson had to form a new model for the atom, and this was known as the plum pudding model. What did that look like? Well, Thomson proposed that the atom was made up of a whole load of positive stuff or material, and that this positive matter was balanced by negative electrons dispersed throughout the material. So the negative electrons in this model were rather like the plums in a plum pudding. Now, what is important here to understand is that this positive and negative charge was spread out throughout the whole atom. So it would have been evenly dispersed throughout the atom. So there would be no concentrations of charge anywhere, resulting in a neutral atom but with an even charge distribution throughout its structure. So in the experiment that we're about to look at, which is the Geiger and Marsden experiment, and this is the important bit. Well, what they did was this, they fired high energy alpha particles. So we have a, an alpha source here. And I will go into this experiment in more detail in the following lesson. They fired these high energy alpha particles at some gold leaf. These alpha particles are positively charged helium nucleuses. OK, and uh, they're traveling at high velocities with high energy and we're firing them at this uh, gold leaf and all of the charge is concentrated in this small nucleus. So following the Thompson plum pudding model for the atom, we remember here we've got gold atoms with the charges evenly distributed about their structure. So there's no concentration of charge at all. So they expected there to be no electrostatic resistance to this alpha particle passing through the gold leaf, simply due to the fact that the charges were spread out through these large gold atoms. And therefore, the electrostatic force acting on this helium nucleus would be very weak. OK, just to summarise then, following the plum pudding model, the alpha particles should pass straight through the gold leaf because the positive and negative charge in the leaf is evenly distributed throughout its structure. And that results in a weak electrostatic force acting on the alpha particle. So following the plum pudding model, they expected the alpha particles to shoot straight through that gold leaf in pretty much the same way as a cannonball would pass through some tissue paper. 
but that's not what happened and we'll discuss what happened in the following lesson and look at its consequences for the model of the atom.